What eventually disappeared and no one noticed? Our need to know who our neighbors are. I listened to a podcast about human interaction recently and the host said that the internet slowly made it possible to live without knowing who the people are next door. It used to be that we would hang out with people in our street or attend dinners, birthdays, and whatnot. Now, everyone seems to have no need to even so much as introduce themselves. The only time we do get to know each other is if we have a complaint. Toys and cereal boxes. Or glow-in-the-dark lightsaber spoons for each Star Wars movie that came out. More importantly toys and Cracker Jack. Hell they don't even come in a box anymore, they come in a bag. Edit and speaking of prizes, you don't get those chance to win under the cap sweepstakes on drinks anymore. Everything is a code that the majority of people probably never take the time to enter on a website. Used to be able to just look under the cap to see if you won, and then mail the cap to the company. Somewhere along the way 9 to 5 turned into 8 to 5. Yeah when I hear the song I'm like wait, did they get paid for lunch? Or just eat at their desks? Or did they actually not work 8 straight hours? They got paid for lunch. The idea was that them being there at lunchtime was because the company paid them to be there the entire time. Companies also used to have company cafeterias that sold decent food at a very reasonable price. Honestly it's really sad because now a fucking stock of snacks is considered a premium offering, even if you have to pay for the snacks. I used to work at a company that had a free snack vending machine. It got turned on at 8 p.m. For those really faithful, hard-working slaves I guess. I worked for a company that catered every meal breakfast, lunch, and dinner. If you didn't like what they catered, you could order any food you wanted like pizza, Chick-fil-A, etc. You could order any snack or drink you wanted, including liquor and beer. All free. The pantry, which was just a huge office, was completely stocked with food, drinks, and kegerator. It was pretty sweet. From what I understand, this is, or was, common practice among large Silicon Valley startups and tech companies. It started out that the workday included a paid lunch, then they decided they didn't want to pay for unworked time, but still wanted 8 worked hours a day, so they moved up the starting time. Yeah, I am bitter about this. We're in the process of full-size can of Arizona teas for 99 cents disappearing. I'm seeing a lot of places starting to carry the smaller plastic bottles for 99 cents or the larger plastic bottles for more. I'm honestly surprised that they've lasted for this long at the same price. They've removed the price from most of the cans now. They denied it at first, but most of them are unmarked now. CD, DVD drives and laptops. I never see swarms of monarch butterflies anymore. It's a combination of a rise in pesticides combined with the absolute dearth of the plants that the butterflies eat on their journey. If you plant monarch butterfly-friendly gardens you'll actually likely become a stop on their migration patterns because it's so needed. IT should also be noted that they lay their eggs on milkweed plants and that's the only plants that nurture and grow their larvae into pupae, and milkweed's been heavily removed from gardens and the wild as we grow our cities and agriculture. By planting a number of monarch butterfly gardens or honestly, general pollinator gardens as well as providing a water source like a puddling fountain, a shallow bowl fountain, or some form of water feature in your gardens, you can really help all pollinators, but specifically monarchs due to your question. I live in Minnesota and we see monarchs from time to time, but when you plant the flowers they eat, you can start to see dozens or more during the migration season as they love those plants. I planted milkweed and finally last year saw some monarch friends. Then I saw the wasps circling the caterpillars. Stupid ecosystem. No pupae for me. Yeah, not much to do there. You might be able to grab the caterpillars beforehand and strap a cage around the limb they are on and protect them that way, but ecosystem is going to ecosystem. Hopefully some survive each season. Huge numbers of butterfly larvae never make it to adulthood and that's fine. It's recommended by conservationists to leave it be. I realize that article isn't identical to the process you said, but in general providing habitat and native host plants is already exactly the right thing to do. So ecosystem is going to ecosystem indeed. We have planted milkweed for years and usually have a lot of egg laying and pupae until last year. Hardly saw any monarchs coming to eat and I don't think we saw any pupae. We will put even more milkweed out there this year. Plant milkweed. It is the only plant that monarch caterpillars can eat. It's a great, inexpensive gardening hobby and very easy to do. People fainting when something unexpected happens. 
and people carrying smelling salts for just such an occasion. It's so 19th century. There's so many unbelievable things going on that it doesn't even phase us anymore. Bring it back. Wear corsets everywhere with way too many layers of dress. Have no air conditioning. Do cocaine or heroin for a toothache. Have clothes and walls dyed in arsenic. See how often you faint. To be fair people weren't fainting from corsets. Only very appearance-driven women at high society events were tight lacing to get extreme figures. The bulk of women wore corsets that fit their waists comfortably to give bust and back support while working. And the layers were not a huge problem as they were all natural fiber and helped with temp regulation. Abby Cox did a great video comparing the comfort and temperature of Victorian versus modern clothing in Nevada summer. The layers helped keep heat off the skin and wicked sweat well unlike modern plastic-based fibers which trap heat and don't absorb sweat well. Though you're right they did expose themselves to a fuck ton of toxic chemicals slash gases in the home, even washing clothes with kerosene. A very important point to add corsets provided an anchor slash base for heavy garments that would otherwise just be hanging off of your body. The boning would help ease the weight. I have a condition that makes me pass out when I get startled or tired or just my brain feels like it, so I wish this one would disappear. Are you one of those goats? Lol I have narcolepsy and cataplexy I collapse when feeling extreme emotion of any kind and my husband and I joke that I'm a fainting goat lol. And for those who don't know, orgasmoplexy is a thing for me and other people who have cataplexy sometimes. Longevity in careers, this is a big one nobody seems to have said. Longevity in careers has largely gone away. People used to get a job and after being there for decades reap the benefits of being seasoned employees, higher salaries, and better perks. Maybe it's because I work in the entertainment industry, but I feel that longevity in careers has gone away. Meaning, people can be amazing at a job, but after 5 plus years the employers start wondering if they could be doing better with a younger slash cheaper candidate for the job. I understand if you ever want to move up in a works place they expect you to bring your A game, but 30 plus years of being incredible is hard. Some years will be better than others, and if employers don't have loyalty to their employees anymore, it is likely the good employee will be fired or let go at some point. I feel like in recent decades this has forced many people who normally wouldn't to switch careers. Can someone work successfully up the ladder at any job without having to shift to another company for a promotion? A combination of employers halting upward movement of their staff while they look for new employees to fill higher roles, and the fact that they get bored of their seasoned employees has largely killed the idea of anyone having a single career. I think a big problem is wages and work have stagnated and so when you want an improvement in your standard, you have to climb the ladder but they expect the world from you at your own company to do that. So it's easier to look elsewhere with higher pay. You can't just comfortably live off the pay of your currently role anymore as inflation takes hold. Shit, I remember when $60,000 per year was the goal for a fairly successful career. A decade later, under $100,000 is almost untenable. The sad reality is that, in the current conditions crazy inflation, absolutely insane real estate market, etc., people now have to climb the ladder just to maintain their quality of life, while it used to be for improving it. The only way to get a raise these days is to switch jobs or to threaten to switch jobs. The companies do this to themselves. Those godawful Chevy commercials with the real people, not actors. One day, I realized I hadn't seen one in a while and it was almost as if they'd never existed. Except I knew they had. Man, I hated those damn things. I believe the YouTube channel Zebra Corner single-handedly killed those ads. Yes, Zebra Corner is amazing with them. Sobe drinks. I'll forever miss you pink sobe in a glass bottle. Kinda surprised I haven't seen this one yet, but Ronald McDonald. You remember the old clown everywhere in and around McDonald's commercials and stores? Gone. Phased out when that clown scare prank trend was going around. He's still chilling on a bench at our local McDonald's. Lazy fucker. About 30 years ago we were at a funeral and for some reason Ronald was visiting the attached parochial school and somehow we connected, so I have photos of me with Ronald McDonald at my friend's uncle's funeral. Those rubber bands shaped like things that you wore on your wrists. Silly bands. My kid got some in a crappy assorted fidget bag, she was like what's the point of these? Gaming consoles at McDonald's. Or in big markets. In the 90s, I lived in a small town that didn't have any big stores, 
but there was a bigger town an hour's drive away where we did our shopping that had those. In those stores, they had PlayStations and Nintendo 64s out for you to try out. I remember seeing Mario 64 for the first time there, and after some other kids got bored with it, I got to try it out as well. It was magic. I think the last store console I saw was PS3, and the last one I tried was probably GBA. TV bumpers. There used to be a little sequence between the show and commercials. Some of them were really interesting and creative. I think my generation remembers the wand IDs on the Disney Channel where a Disney celeb would use a wand to make the logo. There were also bumpers that were PSAs or other actual content. Edit, yes I watched that documentary on YouTube. It's amazing. Everyone go to Defunctland's channel and watch the one on the Disney Channel jingle. Just trust me. Don't look up spoilers. After these messages. We'll be right back. I don't know, I didn't notice. Reminds me of a hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy quote. You know, said Arthur, it's at times like this, when I'm trapped in a Vogon airlock with a man from Beetlejuice and about to die of asphyxiation in deep space that I really wish I'd listened to what my mother told me when I was young. Why, what did she tell you? I don't know, I didn't listen. Tayo Cruz. He just threw his hands up in the air and disappeared. Sounds like dynamite. Having many family photographs in homes. Not completely gone, but homes used to be plastered in them. The only times I really notice them is in homes of older people. Got my wife a digital photo frame for the living room, it has all our family photos rotating with a focus on vacations and adventures. We have another in our bedroom that's for our wedding and honeymoon photos. 10 tenths, absolutely great investment. So many happy memories and it never fails to put a smile on her face at least once a day. For parties, we'll purposefully change the photo sets to include anyone who's visiting to see if they catch it. Including brand new photos we took at the current party. It's cute and low-key hilarious when they realize the photo is 5 minutes old. Thank you for watching, in the comments below the video you can write what eventually disappeared and no one noticed.